Okay, yesterday we have been discussing about various types of uh, catalytic and non-catalytic reactions, and uh, we have given the examples to two types, type A and type B. Now let us continue that, and for type C reactions classified as solid going to fluid plus solid. Yeah, example, C A, wonderful, that is one of the again one of my favorite reactions, C A C O 3 solid giving us C O O solid plus C O 2 gas, right. Yeah, any other example, of course, most of the decomposition reactions like for example, magnesium hydroxide M G O H twice giving us M G O solid plus H 2 O gas. Oh, like that there are many, but I am just only giving a sample of you know one or two, so that you can just uh, appreciate these reactions. right? Again, conducting these reactions and most of the time even zinc hydroxide, all these reactions we will conduct to generate these oxides in the form of porous particles. right? So, if I take CaCO3, why you should become porous is that the gas is evolving from uh, the solid. So, when the gas is coming out, it is not that only outer layer uh, gas comes out, you know throughout the reaction. Uh, throughout the particle, the gas may evolve and then just come out, right. So, that is why it uh, produces a porous particle and in most of these reactions, the input what we have to give or uh, the rate controlling step may be the heat transfer and these reactions are one of the wonderful examples of uh, heat transfer controlling. Like for example, this uh, calcium carbonate decomposition, I have to supply sufficient heat, right. If I do not supply sufficient heat, there is no reaction. Okay. And there is no other reactant where mass transfer coming into picture. Like you have carbon plus oxygen giving you uh, CO2, you have carbon solid and oxygen as the gas, but unless oxygen is there, th that is mass transfer, right. How much oxygen you send to the surface of the uh, coal that only determines the rate of reaction, but here it is the heat transfer, Right, I have some derivation earlier, but I do not know whether I can cover all that in this course, because we have to do many other things. So, this is one type of reactions and then we have type D reactions, where solid plus fluid giving me only fluid. Yeah, you know many examples in this, NaCl and NaCl and water, what do you get? Yeah, okay. Salt solution. It is not a reaction, it is simple dissolution, okay. That is not the one. And you know, we have our famous reactions like coal combustion in this. So, solid is carbon plus O2 gas giving us CO2 gas. You have another famous reaction. Many of our, uh, you know, department uh, people they are doing work on this gasification reaction. Gasification also is, uh, you know, is belonging to this group. That is uh, C S plus gasification H two O gas giving us C O gas plus H two gas. And this is one of the very important gasification. I mean, uh, reactions now. Okay. We felt that you know by 2020 all the reserves of coal will go throughout the world, wrong estimation. We have still lots of coal. In India also we have still lots of coal. So, for energy that is why we, we try to look at the solar energy, wind energy, all kinds of things. But still we have this natural resource called coal and that we have not yet still used and we do not have good technologies, clean technologies. Right? One of the clean technologies what we think is this. Why? Because if I use uh, coal and uh, oxygen giving CO2, I will get lot of ash, tons and tons and tons and uh, ash. But here, I will also get 
definitely some solid material rejected because impurities in this carbon, in this coal. But still, this is more decent one because H2O will give me C plus H2O will give me CO plus H2, and this can be used for many many chemical stocks, as a chemical stock. That means as a uh, reactant uh, which can be used for many uh, for producing many other chemicals, and this also can be used as uh, the energy source because we can burn CO, it goes to CO2. And also H two H two H two energy, you know, right? And this is also one of the rules people are trying to get. How do you separate CO and H two? Get only H two now. You know, we are now trying to design hydrogen uh, uh, cars, right? For many things, we would like to use hydrogen, and getting hydrogen is not that easy. Okay, this is also one of the steps. And you see here, at the end, there will not be any solid particles here. That is the beauty here. And how do you really design this? It's not that difficult if you understand that. But as I have been telling you all the time, the universal steps are again identifying how much steam going and identifying how much carbon and where the mass transfer or heat transfer controlling, writing, uh, developing the overall rate, using the overall rate again to design the reactor. That's all. I mean, that is universal process. We are not going to change at all that. Good. So this is another type of uh, reaction. There are many, but only I am just giving one or two. And uh, you know carbon disulfide, how they produce carbon plus uh, sulfur. So all kinds of there are many many reactions, and this is what I have been telling you. You know the beauty in chemical engineering is that every reaction has a wonderful story. Every product through a chemical reaction, right? And it is not one particular uh, reaction uh, through which I will get CO2. For example, there are many many sources, or for example CaO. There are many many sources. may be single step or multiple steps and which one is the most economical process that's what finally we are trying to see as an engineer and then develop a process for that that's why we never have a uh, i mean a closed ended problem we always have open ended problems and open ended problems have to be closed only depending on economics okay this is where i will concentrate because finally that may give me the least Uh, you know, cost for the plant, then I can produce more and I can earn more, right? So that is what is the overall picture in all these chemical processes. And type E, the reactions are simply solid going to fluid. Very famous reactions are there in that. If you are able to get some idea, one example. Nowadays, on the uh, naphthalene ball is not a reaction; it's just simply evaporation. Yeah, I mean, on this planet now, many people are happily using this kind of reactions to destroy people. Huh? Not nuclear, dynamites and all that. And that's what what also you do in your uh, you know Diwali time, right? Solid, making lot of noise. Suddenly disappearing, fluid. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, the, this is you know uh, dynamite is one of the examples, and uh, the equation thermal decomposition of ammonium nitrate. So NH4, NO3. This is solid, giving us N2O gas, and which do gas and i think i have already told you why you know the crackers give a lot of noise and if you want to produce more and more noise what do you do with the crackers you know you have different kinds of uh, crackers and i think uh, i don't know this name how it has got there is one lakshmi cracker name that gives the maximum sound okay and there are also some other small uh, pellets like thing uh, where i think uh, i don't know what they call and uh, that also gives a huh? A oh, bullet bombs, ah, huh? uh, you see, expert. <laughs> that also gives a lot of uh, sound. Okay, why? Why do you think it gives a lot of sound? And you know the simple one, that red one. Yeah, that won't give you know nice fellow. It won't give much sound. <laughs> why? Why? It is simply PV equal to RT. Okay, yeah, you know you tighten it so much with so many layers of paper. And if you take that red one, not many layers of paper is there. Whereas this uh, Lakshmi cracker will have lot of uh, things, and that what is called bullet bombs. Huh? 
yeah bullet bombs will have some kind of i think a twine or something around that so you are not trying to uh, you are not allowing uh, to expand so easily so that's why when it is very very hot then uh, you know this suddenly the yeah uh, the solid will become gas and pressure is developed if you are not allowing it to come out so if it reaches beyond certain value then it uh, breaks that shell when it's breaking that shell it makes noise because that energy has to be released so that's why i think you know practically you can also de design one uh, vessel where the pressure of this gas is less than the uh, the strength of that shell then it won't give any sound it will st stay there simply okay you see how much technology involved in these crackers yeah and there are very very small ones also that red ones uh, with uh, circular things caps or something they call okay that is only for children right okay <laughs> so it's not allowed so that's why different things i know it's all wonderful things i say if you are able to concentrate on any subject i think you know you have many many pleasures but somehow i think we, the present generation lacks that pleasure i know most of you are coming by you know the first thing what you do is oh the cdt is coming at 8 o'clock we have to go to the class yeah you know really most of you because i think otherwise just giving the degree after you pass jee or gate or whatever exam you have then you all of you will be very happy i mean what is the use of that in between you have to learn something right i know most of the jee people are very happy if they are allowed to come through in gate you know main in gate and uh, near that security check you give the degree and ask them to go out gate i think i i, I think they are the most happy people if you do that because simply that passion is never created in their minds never created in their minds in the schools unfortunately okay and school system was one of the best system in the country right but i think we destroyed that through coaching i mean in andhra you know i think you know all uh, uh, schools they have a collaboration mou yeah memorandum of understanding with the coaching centers okay and from the time he is born till he completes that uh, 18 years he will be there only in coaching center and uh, in the school everything will be going on as if he has attended he has attended the laboratories and uh, you know the what is that attendance everything will be given right and then in the coaching center what, what do they do i told you know ramayas many people are there yeah they will take the cane and then show you that okay if you are not solving this problem i will hit you okay i may be exaggerating a little bit but i think that is the truth most of the time so that's why where is the passion for you for the subject where is the liking you know that, that something is there in this world i want to produce i mean have you ever thought how this uh, uh, this bulb is operating working and why it won't immediately come into the light you know that's why we say that people like me call tube lights because we cannot uh, react very quickly okay so uh, why why you should take time i mean just around you there are thousands of things where you know we never care what we need is a degree and job and that that job also nowadays only in terms of lakhs okay yeah i think you know we proudly put all our uh, advertisements in the not advertisements i think that news in the uh, newspapers saying that iit madras beat uh, iit kanpur by 10 lakhs okay 75 lakhs and 85 lakhs i mean at that age if you are only worried about money i tell you you cannot do anything in your in life you have a tremendous corrupted mind already yeah i mean at least it takes time i say slowly that's why last time convocation last time before uh, before convocation this gopal krishna gandhi you heard of him no he is west bengal governor i think now he is in chennai only we called him as a chief guest he has given a wonderful talk i don't know how many people really got it and of course students would have never definitely not got it okay i am sure about that because they were talking when he was talking okay we can see you no know, as usual like in the class okay and there were 800 900 people sitting there but they were making only slow noise but this man was reading and he told that so beautifully it seems for everything there is a measure he said in uh, tamil alavu or something i don't, I don't know huh? correct huh? a measure and he says that uh, if uh, elephant has six legs because it's very heavy it looks very awkward or two trunks it looks very awkward right or like that for everything on this planet there is a measure so similarly he says for money also there is a measure 
beyond some value there is no value for the money i mean what do you do i say okay i, have, I am a billionaire what do you do with, with that money i cannot eat 10 times per day because i have money so i cannot sleep on two cots or 10 cots you know that is impossible again okay i cannot travel by two cots i cannot buy uh, go, go by two flights at, at the same time so then what is the use that is you no know, allow that is the measure that is the minimum thing required and how much you can eat i mean this has a certain volume capacity you know stomach beyond that you cannot eat maybe maximum maximum maybe 3 2 liters or 3 liters okay so because i am a billionaire i want to eat 10 liters means you will die immediately that's all there is no uh, uh, i think maybe <laughs> any result at all only death so that is why that measure is there so at the end the, that measure also slowly comes not uh, you know suddenly getting 10 lakhs uh, that's why many people don't know how to spend money if you suddenly give them and people like me particularly if you give me even 10 lakhs i don't know how to spend right because we have born in and uh, you know brought up in that way right maybe billionaire sons may spend on that you know may they may go and then take one drink which may costing 1 billion dollar <laughs> okay yeah maybe there are drinks we don't know okay and afterwards what happens to him we don't know but i think you know they, this is the one so like that for everything there is a measure and nowadays i i think i told you also this je counseling fortunately they removed the counseling i told you i think in 80s and uh, 80 till 85 the question was what is chemical engineering they used to ask then we used to explain oh this is what is chemical engineering and where do you go my son or daughter after joining then we used to say yeah there is opportunity to go abroad and that's how you know dishan kanar zaman pushpavanam ravi uh, kannan all these people have gone kannan is not our btech student all these people have gone and then they have come back and they are doing very well absolutely no problem about that but that was the questions and as usual mainly the questions are from the parents okay i mean that fellow who wrote the exam he will never ask because he is already over his life okay yeah so that's why he cannot even talk there anyway and these people ask and then afterwards it was saying that you know okay uh, this uh, internal uh, jobs and all that they have forgotten straight away they used to ask that can my son or daughter go abroad because abroad means dollars dollar means multiplied by 50 okay i'm general tambru i think qatar gives i think 90 i think i don't know they don't go to qatar because you know you have to put dress like this or you know you have to put like this there are some things you know you cannot enjoy there so anyway now i think you know people are coming and just asking uh, yeah, in between what kind of jobs my son or daughter may get now how much my son or daughter will get that's all okay this is how changed he that fellow is not even giant and they ask that you know how much my son is going to get or daughter is going to get in between what happens they don't care in between there is a learning call you know they think call a learning where everyone has to learn so like that you know that passion is not there in non catalytic reactions alone i can talk two years really because there are so many wonderful reactions and one reaction is not same the other way that is in fact the beauty you know in mechanical engineering there is only one ic engine and that has not changed for the last 100 years right what is that it has changed fuel may change people are asking hydrogen or asking uh, alcohol okay ethyl alcohol so they use you no know, or maybe petrol maybe something else or what do they change outside bonnet dicky different shapes you know all different shapes they create what else is there the four tires are there all the time okay i think they have not designed it with th- th- three tires you know like auto right maybe nano may come like that i think earlier also right yeah so only uh, but engine is constant almost except delta x changes but in chemical engineering process for sulfuric acid alloy uh, alone there are seven processes that's what what we know and if you your mind is working much much deeper you can create another 10 processes but what we choose is the simplest one to operate as an engineer and most economical one that's what we do that is what happens in every chemical reaction and how many chemical reactions you can list out i mean just if i give you i mean you may not list out anything because you are not bothered okay but in general if you go to any chemistry book and then see okay and then see the number of reactions every reaction has a beautiful story particularly when you are when you want to produce that in industrial level okay and that is what is chemical engineering producing at industrial level okay good anyway so like this i think you know we have so many reactions and uh, i mean this is one of the reactions the other one is not that exciting because thermal decomposition of oxalic acid okay that is also another example 
and but this is what exciting you know many people are misusing on this planet i don't know i think uh, that's why uh, alfred nobel felt very very sorry and at the end i think you know he created so many nobel prizes because he himself felt that you know this invention was totally wrong, dynamite invention was totally uh, wrong thing that has happened it is never used for uh, good purposes now even though originally they were asking always war of course now yeah this oxalic acid this is oxalic acid n2 sorry h2 h2 c2o4 this solid giving us h2o gas plus co2 gas plus co gas also good so okay. now the last one type f in type f we have fluid going to solid and fluid okay so yesterday i was telling you one example you know the silica sih4 that is silane this is pure silica plus two h2 gas and i have been telling you this reaction has tremendous commercial value now okay if someone wants to do this okay then uh, another one i don't know in chemical technology again the chemical technology one subject we never uh, like it no we hate all that subject but i think uh, most of these reactions i don't say almost all but many reactions are mentioned in the chemical uh, technology books right either organic chemical technology or inorganic chemical technology books and there is a process called mond process what do they produce in mond process mond yeah right yeah nickel who told that oh you remember huh? oh, very good <laughs> nickel yeah mond process so in the mond process what we do is nickel co4 this is gas okay i think yeah so then you will have ni solid plus 4 co gas balance that this should be outside okay good yeah so we have so many types of uh, reactions now and what we have to do for non catalytic reactions is we will take some of the you know more popular uh, reactions and the more popular reactions I mean, types are type a and type b that we will take first and what is the uh, objective we take those reactions and then try to develop the kinetic models for type a type b and type c problem is that with the time uh, Ah, uh, particularly, yeah. Uh, ah, uh, here. Uh, uh, type D. The problem is that the size of the particle is continuously decreasing with uh, uh, time during reaction. Okay. Yeah. And in type C, it is the heat transfer controlled most of the time. Right. So that means I have to sufficiently put the heat, and the heat transfer must be also very very quick. and reaction can control or heat transfer can control if heat transfer is very very slow reaction will be will not be that uh, fast whereas if you have sufficient heat transfer then reaction may be controlling that is slow when compared to that so that is the peculiarity in type c and type d what we have is that uh, the particle size continuously changing and if you look at type a and type d at uh, sorry type b then we have a solid plus fluid giving us either solid fluid or fluid because these are irreversible reactions i don't have to worry about the products so these two we can club as one category right so what we do is we now concentrate on type b and type a and type b particles reactions so let me do that kinetic models for type uh, type a and b reactions
and the general nomenclature what we give for type uh, these two types mm, okay so you have solid plus fluid giving us either solid plus fluid or fluid so this is type a and this is okay let me also write this oh type b fluid yeah sorry that is type d this is solid yeah thank you yeah this is type b solid plus fluid right so here the situation is same when this reversible reaction if it is not reversible reaction then we have to worry about how this solid and fluid both are reacting right so uh, for the kinetic models as i told you first uh, we have to visualize okay i mean every time you have to visualize whatever you do right without knowing yourself you do this visual process that's what i have been telling earlier also to some of the people that we have what is called our mental screen and most of the time we have forgotten about our mental screen and that you do without knowing yourself okay suddenly if i say delhi what do you remember or bombay what it comes to your mind i mean it depends on different people correct no yeah that too it depends on what part of delhi you have seen or what part of bombay you like and you know that kind of things that is the mental screen in fact I mean, for me, immediately Delhi means that uh, you know gate, uh, what is that India Gate. That comes to my mind because that I, that road I like so beautifully. That is a wonderful road, you know that Rashtrapati Road or something. I don't know that name of that road, but it's so wonderful. Okay, and you also know that Bombay means immediately Shahrukhar may come to some people. Correct, no? Yeah, or maybe Aishwarya Rai may come to some people. Uh, speed? What is speed? Oh yeah, fast life. yeah okay i thought speed there is a movie or something you know okay. yeah that may come to let i don't know get to of india may come to some people so like that what is that you are doing in that process you know there is a mental screen where you are trying to project whatever you know on that that we don't know we have forgotten about that that's why even in chemical engineering processes that mental screen should come automatically i think that you know if the moment i say distillation column most of you may not see actual distillation column you may see either macabe thiele diagram or uh, you know what we draw like uh, the tower with plates okay that is a mental screen nothing wrong in that because actual uh, distillation column we have not, you have not seen we have not seen no the real one how many people have seen distillation column in the uh, you have seen kavya where did you see which industry you one barth oh, petroleum petroleum abhinav you have seen yes sir ah nasimar ready you worked in industry i think okay prabhu you have not seen ha yes sir i okay yeah distillation columns are there so what do they sir oil crude oil they yes sir ah okay they refine oil ah they will have lots i think yeah so uh, swami you have also seen distillation column we have not seen <laughs> you don't have seen a distillation column ha ah, okay so but anyway it may not come but do you uh, do you remember the diagram for distillation column i mean i am not talking about those people other than chemical engineering but in, i think in biotechnology also they have, you have a course called unit operations no ah oh, okay good so like that for any process we can imagine that has to come to our mind first similarly here our simplest imagination is i have a solid i have a fluid and i have to develop the kinetic model for that kinetic model should give me minus r a okay good so what do i imagine here i have a solid and maybe i will say that yeah i have the solid like this right and this solid can also be a porous particle or it can be non porous particle and is there any other possibility porous or non porous or any any other thing and all particles for discussion they are spherical particles okay i think real spherical particles will never exist in industry but all academicians like us will first draw only circle not even sphere only circle we draw and you imagine it is a sphere 
Okay, so that's what you know. We are also teaching beautifully to you all the time, you know. Yeah. But it's only imagination. You know, circle. Can you imagine as a sphere? We can, right? Because most of us would have seen the sphere. So that's why. Okay. So this is the particle. It can be porous particle or non-porous particle. So now, if I want to, yeah, I mean, just uh, uh, what normally we show for non-porous particle is, uh, sorry, this is porous particle. This is porous particle, and this is non-porous particle. Non-porous. Yeah, this is again just to show cracks, you know, as if there are pores. Good. So now, once I have this, first I have to visualize my process, and then we should draw the profiles. And after drawing the profiles, profiles, you know, solid profile and uh, fluid profile. What is happening inside the bed, as inside the particle or outside the particle or in the film? All that we have to imagine. So that's why these are the. Possibilities in uh, these reactions, non-porous particles and porous particles. The moment you imagine you have a non-porous particle, you have a different model. The moment you have imagined a porous particle, uh, kinetically you will have a different model. Okay, and these models depend on uh, uh, you know what kind of process that is going on through these particles. Right. So let us take first uh, uh, non-porous particle. Simple to understand. Non-porous particle. This may be any reaction, like you know, type A and type B. We have so many reactions, right? So, once I think you know, like for example, uh, iron ore reduction. Okay, iron ore particles. When you take them out, most of the time, all ore particles they are not porous. They are very very strong, uh, dense particles, right? So, if I imagine that, what kind of reaction should be going on? Around that. That means I have a porous particle, right? And then I am sending. I am just isolating. Always my imagination is that one particle first, because that is easy for me. Then extend it to number of particles, right? And this one particle I may take from a packed bed. That is the contacting pattern, or from a fluidized bed, or from a moving bed, or from a rotary kiln, right? Any kind of reactor I can just take one particle. The process is same in that, right? The process in, in all of these reactors, the process is same. There should be a gas. This is a fluid, and then this is particle. And uh, the imagination is that now the particle, uh, the the fluid has to reach the surface of the particle for the reaction to take place. And uh, my experience in fluid mechanics will tell me that there is a boundary layer. Okay, between these two phases, right? So this boundary layer is this fluid boundary layer, and uh, then uh, the fluid has to go to the surface, and then react. So if it is a non-porous particle, it is a chemical reaction. Okay. So that means uh, the moment if you have sufficient temperature and uh, other conditions, and if I have mass transfer to this particle, then the reaction takes place. And how do I imagine this? We can imagine now this that we have, a, yeah. Uh, let me write bigger one. This is the uh, film, and uh, we are now talking about reaction after some time. Already I started. Maybe the total reaction time is twenty uh, minutes. Uh, maybe at the eighth minute, tenth minute, what is happening? How the uh, particle looks like, right? So uh, I should so show here. Okay. This is the film. Or oh, maybe I think I should not cross this one. This is the film. This is the particle. Uh, okay. I will also write here the general reaction. The general reaction. Where do I write? Uh, maybe here I write. I think A gas. B B solid, giving me R R solid plus S S gas. Okay, and if the small s equal to zero, then we have the small s. Yeah, type B. Yeah, s e s equal to zero for type B. So now, after some time, how the reaction is taking place? First uh, step is through the film. It has to the 
uh, A has to go diffuse and reach the surface and after reaching the surface, then it has to first react it is a non porous particle. So, first the surface this surface has to uh, react and then that uh, product should be a porous product. Okay. If it is not porous, porous product, then uh, you know that is all only outer layer only you will have the reaction. Then if it is a porous product, then slowly it has to go inside and at one point of time may be out of 20 minutes, it may be 15th minute or maybe it is 12th minute, then you will have yeah, uh, this one is the product. So, product I will draw simply okay, like this. and this is the core which is shrinking and finally, this core has to go to 0 that is unreacted core. This is one of our imaginations, this is the core, core shrinking. This is one of the imagination that is why we call this one as shrinking core model. Shrinking core model. Okay. One of the wonderful examples I always feel whenever I eat gulab jam is shrinking core model. Correct? No? If we, uh, some uh, not properly cooked uh, gulab jam, if you take the central portion will be hard, the outside will be anyway uh, very soft. So, outside is the real cooked one, the central one is the core, right. So, that is one example of shrinking core, because it is a mouth watering example all the time for people. right? Good, uh, you like uh, gulab jam? What do you call it? Gulab jam or rasgulla? I do not I don't know what is the difference between those two, both taste sweet that is the only thing I know. Okay, <laughs> That is one. So, that is why shrinking core model always you know we can see for example, even our uncooked rice is an example of shrinking core model. Only thing is you may not have uh, yeah, spherical that is cylindrical example. Right, cylindrical size if you take the thing. So, that is why we see daily I think our shrinking core models, but here in this shrinking core model uh, in our course we have to develop an equation for this to get a kinetic model. Right. So, if I want to plot the concentration profiles for this, how do I plot? I mean where is the concentration? We have to plot for both concentration profile for solid, concentration profile for fluid. Right. So, fluid uh, this is the film. So, I cannot go that side I think. Yeah. Shall I move this side? This is C A G, this is C A S. See, I am trying to draw the same thing what we have been uh, discussing in general you know in the beginning also. That is all and all these things the procedure is same. And uh, now, this is uh, yeah, this is core this in fact r equal to 0, this is r equal to capital R and this we call r e r c. Now, we have to also show uh, that there is no reaction or this uh, core cannot shrink inside. Uh, let me say this is B. So, the uh, core cannot shrink inside if there is no reaction. So, that is why there must be diffusion of this is C A C A C on the core and this one, this particular one, uh, okay. this C A as a function of R, that profile I am talking. Now, you see here what are the steps? Step 1 is concentration of uh, the gaseous reactant, which has to go through the film and if there is a resistance, there will be a drop and then uh, step 2 is concentration on the surface, uh, yeah, step 2 is the diffusion sorry step 1 is mass transfer of uh, gaseous reactant through the film, step 2 is diffusion of this reactant through the ash layer. Yeah, We call the product layer as also ash layer that is the general word people use ash layer. 
there is also a history about this because I think the first model was in Japan by one Kuni and he used the shrinking core model for uh, coal. Right? So, coal outside layer if the ash is not leaving the surface then you have the ash layer outside. So, that word people use you know normally we do not want to change you know if someone first paper writes something wrong we always try to defend that okay? ash layer, ash layer, ash layer. So, like that we do not call product layer we will always say ash layer this is what is the lesson to you know uh, you will be asking in uh, the synopsis meeting of research scholars. Yeah, I think they say that is why it is also it is there in the literature. Then I used to ask them you know then what is the guarantee that the literature people are right or why do not you change that convention if uh, you feel that that word is not suitable. First you have to question whether they are right or wrong, second you have to question that whether the uh, message using those words is clear or not. Right? Ash means if I say the same shrinking core model applied to Fe 2 O 3 plus H 2 giving me Fe plus uh, uh, <coughs> H 2 O. If I give that example when I say ash you will blink because ash means we know we have seen ash for cigarette, we have seen ash for when you are burning paper that ash only always in our mind again mental screen right for our imagination. So, that is the reason why this ash layer is a word which normally use it is a product layer for us right otherwise you may not forget. So, that is the one yeah and how do I now draw for the solid the solid profile I may extend this to this side that is the center r equal to 0 yeah this is r equal to 0 r c and capital R. Right. So, how the concentration of uh, solid will vary with time, there would not be any concentration gradient, whatever concentration you have that concentration has been converted that means, you will have if it is C B naught in the beginning. Right. So, you also should have here C B naught which has been converted totally, then you will have this C B naught, this is only this much left, this is C B naught. And how do you express the concentration there? What are the units of concentration of solid? Okay, what are the unit of concentration of gas? LKG question. Huh? Moles per unit volume. Okay. Can you also express similarly for B? Yeah, we can, why not? Yeah, because I know the molecular weight, I know the weight of the solid. So, if I divide by that then you will get moles per unit volume okay, per unit volume if you take right number of moles divided by. So, that is why C B naught again you know it is solid, but you know if I do not mention I am sure 50 percent of the class will get doubt in the examination. Now, you may be may not care, but all doubts will come only in the examination hall no, generally right. So, that is the reason why I am just mentioning all even the silly things. So, this is the one. And symmetrically, if I show this will be like this and this also will be like this, symmetrical both sides because it is happening on both this side and this side together. It is a symmetric diffusion, reaction is also symmetric around the particle that is why we have taken spherical particle for our easy imagination and then we do that. This is the one right, this is the model for shrinking uh, core model if I take a non-porous particle. You know the moment you imagine you have a porous particle things are quite different. If you have a porous particle. So, in porous particle you have uh, yeah one more thing which I have to draw here I think is uh, initially I have this is the particle at time t equal to 0 this I anyway this again you know model discrimination in the beginning, but when you are developing equations again I have to draw the same picture and then uh, we have to write the equations, but this this information is only to give you in the beginning how do you discriminate model when do you take porous part uh, the porous model and when do you take non porous model how do you draw the diagrams and all that that is what what I am discussing now. So, this one at time t equal to 0 after some time size is same, but the score and after till yeah some time t and uh, after some time size is again same core is almost 0. 
this is with time. Okay, that's why we move. And for non-porous, I mean uh, the porous particle, you have uh, initially a particle, right, with uh, yeah, film also is there. It won't change with time. Same size, and again, same size. So, every time I do not have to show the film, we are only talking about how this is moving. So, now you have the cracks here and uh, the first step is anyway the mass transfer through the film, then second step is diffusion into the pores and while it is diffusing it is also reacting. That means, at any point of time depending on what kind of porosity you will have, right? what kind of porosity you will have depending on porosity, that is why porosity also is a uh, parameter here. Depending on that, where the reaction play, uh, uh, is uh, taking place, we have to imagine. Imagine that you know we have very, 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 very small pore volume or, or pore sizes. So, then practically that is nothing but your shrinking core model, because at any time the gas cannot go to the center of the particle. In the other extreme, which we call truly homogeneous model, I have lots of porosity that means, the um, uh, molecules of gas, gaseous reactant can easily go through all these pores. Right? That means, at any point of time, if I look into the palette, everywhere I have uniform, uniform concentration of gas, because there is no uh, resistance. So, at that time, the reaction is uniformly taking place throughout the particle, as if it is a batch reactor. Correct? No? In batch reactor, that is the imagination. So, when you have a batch reactor, you stir very well and everywhere you have the same reaction. So, in the under truly homogeneous conditions, the conditions are exactly like our batch reactor. But if I have somewhere in between porosity, one is non porous, other one is truly homogeneous, where the porosity is very, very large, then between this, we have this what is called homogeneous model that is shrinking core model for porous particle homogeneous model, even though it is not that homogeneous. Yeah, we have this homogeneous model, where the imagination is after some time t, you will have more of a product near the surface and slightly inside, then like this, because here the rate of reaction is not that much, because there is some concentration gradient. Okay. And at this point, you have most of it is reacted may be a small portion is left. I think I am making noise now, but uh, yeah. Here, I may not have that kind of product formation, where I have just some, yeah. still that central point might not be reacting completely. And of course, if I wait for some more time, then yeah, completely it may, it may get uh, reacted. And here, I, I can tell you later, because we are only trying to do shrinking core models, because most of the time there are non-porous particles, porous particles are very few. But if you have a porous particle homogeneous model, we do not even know how to define the conversion, because at any point inside, I mean very accurately. right? So, at any point inside this uh, uh, solid, reaction is going on, whereas here I know clearly the boundary, I, I can calculate clearly the number of moles in this volume, because I know concentration moles per unit volume, this volume I know how much depending on R c. So, then I can calculate conversion very easily. Whereas, here it is everywhere I have to calculate how many moles and then I have to totally integrate from uh, yeah, this to center and then only get the average conversion throughout the particle. If I draw the concentration profile here, okay. mm, ah, here let me show also.
yeah there is no core here and cag then you will have cas then you have throughout it may happen so this is uh, ca as a function of r and coordinate is r equal to 0 this is r equal to capital r oh, sorry this is r equal to r and that is the film okay so now if i draw for solids how the concentration looks like Let us say I have C B naught is this. Okay, here I don't have C B naught anyway inside the particle. After some time, how it drops? Where it will be more at the center? C B. Yeah. Huh? At the center. Then how do I draw? Yeah. So you have a concentration drop something like this. This is C B. C B again as a function of R. That depends on the diffusivity, of course, diffusivity depends on the porosity and all that. So, now these are the two models what I have one is a homogeneous model, another one is shrinking core model, and now uh, we are going to in this course only study more about shrinking core model and homogeneous model mathematics we cannot develop, I know we can develop, but I think I will not have time to do all that, but I can give you the basic information uh, like this on homogeneous model and all the non catalytic models for gas solid particles type A and type B have been based on either this model, shrinking core model or homogeneous model, either this or that. Homogeneous model I will do one equation that is the simplest one, truly homogeneous model. Right? That means, I have large porosity where everywhere you have the equal concentration of the uh, gas, then the reaction is uniformly going on throughout the particle. That is like a batch reactor. In fact, if it is a first order with respect to A, then you will get almost batch reactor design expression okay? for the kinetic model uh, R A. Right? So, the, now the overall picture is that we have now identified shrinking core model and homogeneous model, which depends on the state of the particle, whether it is porous or whether it is non porous. If it is non porous, then we use shrinking core model, whether it is porous, then we use homogeneous model. And now, using these two models, how do you actually develop now the rate equation? 